everyone and welcome to Tea Views at Sen with Sven. And we're here today at Superette with Quinty. Hi. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Quinty is a lady of the tea and you guys have Crucial Tea. Yes. Which is a quality tea. So um, why did you choose for Crucial? So to keep to maintain the same philosophy as the rest of the business, we want to be sure that every product is traceable and it's grown in a sustainable way. And we want to support uh, yeah, local farmers where the tea comes from. So we need to know every step from where the tea is grown until the tea gets here. And there's no middleman, there's only the person who we buy from, which is Crucio. Mm -hmm. So for us, that's the best way to know that every product has a good quality. So no preservatives, no additives, no colorants. So we know that it's good quality, we know where it comes from, and we know every step of the way. So right. we trust it. So there's a whole philosophy here behind yeah. it. Um, how important is tea at Supret? So I wouldn't say it's the most important thing because we're right. a restaurant, but in line of all the rest, it's something that's important to have because people like a good cup of tea and it's nice to have with the pastries in the bakery or just after dinner or after lunch. So it is important. Well, we enjoy a good cup of tea as well. Yeah. Which one is your favorite? I like the cherry leaf, the wild cherry leaf. Okay, so why is that? It's very fruity and intense, but like not too strong. It's quite soft. It's very nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now uh, let's taste some tea. Yep. Right. So um, we're here today with Lawrence and you, and mm. we're going to taste three teas, uh, all from Crucio Tea. So the first one is Pau Darko, which is a special one because it's actually a trunk. It comes from Brazil. And that's why it's called the Brazilian tree trunk. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> good. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Well, it's got a strong smell. It's, it's, it's very, very subtle tea. It's not a strong tea, mm -hmm. so I like it. And there aren't any flavors that push through it. No, exactly which is something that happens often with infusions. There's something that's overpowering. Yeah, I mean, if you, for example, if you put min mint with something else, the mint will totally overpower all the other yeah, flavors. So. Exactly. This is like a really smooth one. Yeah. Um, Subtle. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's what I got from it. It says here that, it, that the sense is more like licorice and oily, and that's yeah. the licorice that I get. Right, so um, you guys enjoyed this, right? Yes. So let's hear it on five. Five? On a, on a score of five. Um, um, I'll say for this tea, um, because it's very subtle, I'll go for a four. Okay. It's quite delicious and very good. Yeah, four. Okay. No, uh, I, I'm going with a four just to be okay to leave room for improvement so two times four yeah uh, i'm going for four and a half i like it very much um especially i like the taste of licorice all right cool next one yes right so second tea uh is a oolong tea it's called puchong let me just pour it in so what, what immediately um catches my eye is that it's very light um, so it must be a very light oolong, which is going to be more like green tea. Yeah. You can smell it's more like a green tea yeah. than an oolong. Because if it's it's highly oxidized, you've got the more like roasty flavors. It's good. It's also subtle, but I do not taste the cucumber. <laughs> cucumber? Yeah, but cucumber? It, it says here there is, <laughs> there, 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 it's a green tea Taste and it has taste, it has um, <laughs> tones of cucumber. Yeah. Well, it is fr fresh. Yeah. It's like a, a very light taste for one that is very special. Yeah, it's a very subtle green tea. Right, so what do you guys think? Honestly, when um, green teas are like the more strong okay. and not subtle, so you can actually taste um, the different spices or different green leaves that are in it. So mm -hmm. I'll go for this one, a three and a half. 
Okay, all right. I don't know. The, the, it has strong competition, like the first one. <laughs> um, but the problem is, with this, the tastes aren't that strong. And now that I've eaten the cookie, my tea, it, it lost most of its flavor. Kind of fades, fades yeah. away in the back. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. I'm giving it a three. Okay, all right. So for me, this is um, four. I really like oblong. Um, so this one is, is particularly um, special to me. I've never actually had an oblong that is so subtle in flavor. So I'm, I'm guessing this is like a very, very lightly oxidized oolong. For me that's a four um, because it's technically very good. Now on to the third one. So the third one is a wang sha. It's a Chinese tea. Um, it's a black tea. And we've got some sweets from our good friend Mia. Uh, cheers. Mm, that's a really subtle smell. Well, what, what immediately catches my eyes is, well, except for the color and what catches my nose actually <laughs> is, is that it's pretty sweet for a black tea. Yeah. Because normally it's, it's more like roasted, um, like very uh, strong flavors like coffee. Yeah. yeah. I would say the thing this one tastes really, oh well, smells really sweet. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing you also have with most black cheeses is if you put them, uh, if you let them sip in for like five feet, for maybe five minutes, then they, they get too strong, I yeah. think. And this one, I think, has already been sitting here for maybe ten minutes and it's still pretty sweet, pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me this is a very classical black tea. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a Chinese tea, they, they often have uh, classical teas. So this one is a good example of that. Yeah. It's, it's still sweet, so I, I like this very much. Because it reminds me of the, of the oolong. See, this one goes perfect together. Yeah. Something sweet, like a black yeah. tea, to uh, balance it out. Yeah. Fruit. Sweet vanilla and not too strong black tea. Mm -hmm. Let's do the, the grading. The grading. Um, I'd go for between three and a half and a four. Because it's black tea, <laughs> it's not too strong. But I, when I compare them, it's not as good as the first tea, so I wouldn't go higher than a four. Okay. All right. How about you? I would like to adjust my previous rating from the second tea. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give that a three and a half. Okay. Because if I taste this, this is more of a three. It's not bad, but it's not ever going to be my favorite. Okay. It's, it's not what I expect from my black tea. Uh, for me, this would be um, the four as well, because technically it's, it's um, exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So um, I would give it a four and a half for that, but flavor-wise, it's, it's not my cup of tea. However, this is um, very sweet black tea, so that's why I'm giving it a four yeah. for this one. So now let's spill the tea here. Uh, what do you guys think of um, the atmosphere here? The atmosphere. Um, so for it, Korea, yeah, right? it's, it's uh, the first time I ever come here, and I really love it. So I uh, will go for the perfect score. Wow, the okay. five. That's the first time. Because when you enter here, you see and feel the coziness. Um, you smell the the fresh odor of freshly baked bread, freshly baked. I don't know, goods they're making here. They're <laughs> making a lot of things. I think mm -hmm. it's true. I mean, four and a half. Because it's, it's really got the, the rustic look and the, the, the domestic look. But with an edge, like, there's skulls on the wall, but they're turned into lights. And they're framed pictures and bare walls and not too, not too refined. Mm -hmm. So you're giving it a four and a half? I'm going for the five as well. 
because for me this is um, the perfect surrounding. Like you said, it's, it's like rustic, very cozy. It's got pretty dim lights, right? Yeah. Also because there's just like the wood fired oven here, which gives it the extra rustic feeling. Yeah. Um, it's it's like a bakery, but then a bakery restaurant. So yeah. That's a mix of. It's it's like a real nostalgic feeling you get here. And also so I'm giving it a five as well. Okay, so for uh, uniqueness, what do you guys think that's that's set this place apart? It's really good that they are not in the center of camp mm -hmm. because otherwise it would be too too busy. Mm -hmm. And that's also a thing that's good here. Okay. Um, so we're here at yeah. the south of camp, right? Yeah. Um, we see a lot of people coming here, but it's okay. It's not too busy. They have morning and evening, so it's not yes, switches. Yes, there is breakfast, lunch yeah. and dinner. Right? Yeah, that they have all. But also, I like the fact that, that you have the street view, but it's not a street view, a busy street. Yeah. yeah. It's like you, you have a whole open window with, yeah, we can't see, but you have a whole wall, just window. So it's not confined, not too close. I think if they had less window, that this would be more crampedness. So I think that's cool. Uh, and yeah, uniqueness is the whole thing going on in the back. Like yeah, you the see. open kitchen, yeah. you can see, smell, almost feel everything happening around you. Okay. Yeah. That. So for me, that would be um, the perfect unique factor here. Uh, so first off, the, the wood-fired oven, which is something you won't find anywhere else here. Yeah. <laughs> right, so thank you very much for watching. That was it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the smell of uh, constant baking made me really hungry. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to eat something here. Uh, see you guys next week for another tea views at Sandwich Fan. Also subscribe below. <laughs> Bye. Bye.